John, talk about uh, our cognitive health. With so much of our population, population growing older, how much of a priority is that to maintain uh, that part of our health as we age? Well, Scott, it's interesting because years ago we were dying sooner. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't quite as much of an issue as it is today. And the, the baby boomer generation, um, of which I seem to be a member, <laughs> um, is not really thrilled about aging without a fight. And we are living longer. We're taking better care of ourselves. Uh, we would prefer not to be misplacing our keys. Um, we'd prefer to maintain the memories that we built over the years. So it's, it's becoming a real driver among consumers as far as what can you do for me to maintain cognitive health? How can mm -hmm. I think better in the moment, be more in the now, remember uh, my to-do list for today, uh, know what I'm going to do three weeks from now, and remember what I did three weeks in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that there are opportunities there, both scientifically and from a commercial standpoint, if products can be developed in that direction. Mm -hmm. When it comes to cognitive health, can you explain what BDNF is and, and what that stands for? Sure, that's a, a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> uh, BDNF is an acronym for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Uh, BDNF is in fact a protein that is secreted by the BDNF gene. And brain-derived neurotrophic factor has been identified um, as being essential for neural health. In fact, there's uh, considerable research indicating that as we age, the hippocampus of our brain actually begins to shrink. Studies have shown that mice, as they age, uh, that part of their brain shrinks, and um, there is lower amount of BDNF in their circulation system as well as resident in their brains. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely implicated in uh, the aging process, per se. When it comes to memory loss uh, or loss of cognitive function, how much of, an, of a factor is BDNF as we, as we age? Well, it's certainly a significant factor. It may not be the only factor. We've had a, a tendency with the rollout of the human genome um, and being Westerners and want to figure everything out. Right now, mm -hmm. we started as ascribing the one gene to one effect mm. syndrome, but that's really not the truth. Um, generally speaking, there's a cascade of gene expressions or targets and markers that get modulated. Uh, BDNF is a very significant player in that arena of cognitive health, memory, uh, peripheral nerve health. Um, but it certainly may not be the, the only one. So we're, we're specifically keying in on BDNF now as one of the building blocks for a, a whole platform of healthy memory. You might have touched on this earlier, but can you explain again BDNF, what those levels do as we age? And is everybody different when it comes to that? Sure, we're all different. And, you know, anecdotally, you'll see examples of people who live to be 95 and they're sharp as mm -hmm. a tack and others you'll you'll hear about they begin having dementia when they're 60. So we're all a little bit different but we age, we all age, we mm -hmm. all die and along the way we will experience some physical changes due to the deterioration of levels of BDNF. Mm -hmm. Just as um, it's been shown that levels of ATP in people diminish over time, their mitochondria become less efficient, uh, same thing happens with BDNF, that, that from a trend standpoint, all older people have lower levels of BDNF. Mm -hmm. in, in, in your research and, and studies that, that you've looked at, what can that lead to? What can low levels of BDNF lead to down the line? 
Well, BDNF has been positively correlated in research to be associated with Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's. I mean, there are some pretty serious mm -hmm. conditions um, that have been associated with low levels of BDNF. Um, interestingly, patients with those conditions have been measured and have been shown to have low levels of BDNF. I'm not implying at this point, based upon what we know today, that if we raise those levels, we could cure Parkinson's or mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. Um, but clearly, it's part of the mechanism of deterioration. And even, even on a more surface level of just long and short-term memory, uh, BDNF is essential. So um, it's definitely a reasonable therapy to consider trying to maintain healthy levels mm -hmm. of BDNF. You mentioned Alzheimer's and that continues to be a, a hot topic uh, these days. Can you talk a little bit more about the potential connection of levels and people with with Alzheimer's and uh, you know we, we don't I think know exactly what causes or how many causes there are of Alzheimer's but can that be a factor? Well it, it always boils down to genetics and environment. Mm -hmm and there's evidence that Alzheimer's and dementia and deterioration of the neural system, the brain, cerebral cortex, the whole thing, um, is a genetic predisposition kind of thing, but having that predisposition doesn't automatically guarantee that you'll develop the condition. Sure. Um, all we know at this point in time is that when these conditions manifest, um, levels of BDNF are certainly lower than in peers who have not developed those conditions.